Highland has football club around it up at their 90th anniversary celebrations and style are putting up a memorable football match against the all-time rivals at Dynamos Sunday the 11th December. It was a great day for football and even for the family too that will take longer to forget if at all it will erase from memory. With the Kokocha superstar Clement Mangwaza a hit to the Boso supporters and even to the visitors too, the stage for the Boso at 90 celebrations had been set. In addition, Gregory Nube of Nintendo Ipos would Lula Umfazomi fame also entertained with the hashtag dance group The Icing on the Cake. Indeed, the city of kings and queens came alive once more, and for a moment you would have thought that the queens were a distraction to the Dynamo's warm-up, as the boys in blue could not avoid the temptation of what Bulawayo has to offer. The Boso at 90 celebrations are indeed a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Anyway, the pre-match formalities eventually got underway with Highlanders legend and guest of honor Lawrence Peary leading the delegation. Dynamos were represented by their treasurer and acting secretary general Webster Marichera. It was at Papa Fields a rare occasion on Sunday the 11th, one of those days you see once in a lifetime. For how many times do you get the Dynamos team going all the way to the predominantly Highlanders in Banco and Grandstand to salute the Boso support? Supporters. And with honor, the black and white legion of supporters responded to Mount Asli. Likewise, Apostle returned the gesture to the Dynamo supporters and oh yes, what a memorable afternoon it was. If only every football match between Dynamos and Highlanders were like this. Quite a pity though that the house was not full to the brim, but such is the marvel of technology the camera did capture on behalf of the absent and such a fundamental piece of history will live forever. Maybe our politicians too may take a leaf from the visuals of the Apostle at 90 Dynamo most celebratory match. Anyway, on to the main business of the day and on the pitch, Dynamos were in no compromising mood as early as minute one, Eric Mudzingwa's hospital pass to his keeper left them under pressure. Mudzingwa's moment of praise then saw him present God knows Morira with an early Christmas present that the latter failed to nail home. In their early response, Highlanders, as they have done for the majority of the season, came out of their shell with constructive play, awaiting for that opportune moment to break. It eventually arose and when it did, impressive Alan Gadzikwa released Raman Kutanzira wide on the left, but his cross into the box was cut out by Marshal Machezane in central defense for Dynamos. On an afternoon when Dimbare clearly meant business, they were back again at the Boso goal area with Brett Amidu breaking clear on the right only to slice his intended cross into a Ariel Swander's arms. Dynamo's highway to the Boso goal appeared to be via the Boso left channel and every time at the port forward, Dimbare were using the right lane. Takunda Sadiki did break on the 11th minute and his pinpoint crosser picked Valentine Daba who could not direct his shot on target. If Boso's defensive left channel was their weakness, their offensive left appeared their strength as they consistently pained their opponents via that left channel with Raman Kutanzira the tormentor in chief. It soon turned out to be a balanced affair of opportunities and with Raman spot Simon Munawa lacking on the edge of the box, Dynamos will be thankful that Munawa caught the ball with his weaker left foot. But the Boso supporters will not care much about that miss and what will matter is that the resultant corner kicker from Brian Banda was cleared only as far as Godfrey Makaruse who let fly a stinger that whistled past a diving Tatenda Mukuruwa, the Dynamos goalkeeper. Within a minute after the goal, Apostle were back again where it was working for them at the most that left channel and Raman Kutanzira again released another fair cross that Munawa failed to control. More than just penetration via the left, Apostle were entertaining too with Alan Gadziqua providing all the fun before picking Kutanzira who as usual delivered into the box but Machez and towered to head away the cross. The exciting match remained a seesaw with Dimbare carving at the next opportunity after Takunda Sadiki burst into the box to pick up Brett Amidu whose quick shot was collected by Aaron Sivanda Boso's player of the year. Boso responded with some eye-catching stuff making soccer look so easy as Eric Mzingwa and Alan Gadzikwa combined to find Samuel Munawa who released Brian Banda but the upcoming defender could not emulate what Makaruse had done hitting the back of the net. Boso were forced into substitution after goalkeeper Errol Sibanda hit himself as he went to intercept Pisa Makaha's free kick. Sibanda was replaced by Prosper Matutu. The Boso technical team headed by Dutchman Errol Akbe has clearly transformed the Highlanders into an exciting outfit and their constructive play from the back has sliced through many an opponent like a hot knife does through butter. It's either Boso are a well-knit unit but if not then their opponents are not compact.
Dynamo has had a fair chance to square the scores of a free kick half created by Bozo on to Sadiki, whose grounder was blocked a backer to Wisdom Mutasa to balloon his shot away off the target. 1-0 in Hilda's favor at halftime then and quite a contest the first 45 turned out to be. At the break, a guest of honor, Lawrence Piri, thanked all that had come to commemorate Bozo's big day and referring to the Dynamo's contingent as sons-in-law, Piri thanked Timbare for accepting their invitation to be part of the celebrations. <laughs> Seven minutes after resumption, a Dynamo's true level of a corner kick headed home by God knows more Wira. Boso goal scorer Godfrey Makaruse could have doubled his tally and sent Highlanders into the lead with a low free kick which took an alert Mukuruwa to deal with. It would take some desperate defending from Boso to deny Timbare the lead when Elisha Muroi was chipped into the box and was flicked onto Sadiki's path by Wisdom Mutasa but Boso's Benson Piri managed to scramble the ball away from danger. By the skin of their teeth, the Highlanders survived the Dynamo's next raid, a series of calculated passes into the home side spot that released Brett Amidu to poke his shot an inch away from the far post. Dynamos were now enjoying their game, all seemed under their control and another great opportunity to take the lead was made a mess of by Takunda Sadiki who failed to finish off God knows Morira's immaculate crosser from the right. Without doubt, the second half belonged to Dynamos and how they failed to take the initiative given the chances that they were creating, only they can answer. Brett Amidu could have done better after stealing a possession from the palms of Matutu, but Amidu would waste the chance with his teammates expecting a pass. Former Highlanders midfielder Valentine Daba followed up after being allowed acres of space, but he could not find the target with his long-range driver that spun away from goal. Speed merchant Gabriel Granvianione then manufactured Highlanders' second goal after picking Picking up possession at deep in his own half to exchange passes with Ralph Matema. With Nyoni played into space, the marketing graduate then left his marker for dead before returning an inch perfect crosser finished off by Matema, and it was advantage Highlanders. Dynamos did not give up the fight. They searched for the equalizer and substitute goalie Prosper Matutu almost presented them with a gift after slipping in his attempt to collect Valentine Daba's free kick. Big Douglas Sivanda was on hand to steer the loose ball away from danger. More problems were to follow for Matutu and Dynamos thought they had drawn level after Takunda Sadiki raced his way towards the edge of the box and let fly with the Prosper pairing back onto Takunda Macheke who finished off at the rebound only to be ruled offside. Another glance at the disallowed goal will reveal that far side assistant Sane Sivanda was spot on as Macheke was offside when Sadiki let loose his shot whose rebound was finished off by Macheke. Forget that the match was a celebratory event for Boso. The players gave it all that they have got, and yes, her tempers did flare as they usually do when the two giants meet. Simbarashe, Korogojgo, and Gabriel Nyoni had to be cautioned by referee Pilani Nube after a heated confrontation following a foul on Granvia. From a Brian Brandas resultant free kick, Ralph Matema rose to nod towards goal only to be denied by Mukuruga. Matema would again be denied from the resultant corner kicker with Korogojgo clearing from the line. With less than a minute left on the clock and Highlanders thinking they had it all done and dusted, Dynamos were rewarded for their never-say-die attitude when God knows more with a clever back heel released Takunda Sadiki who was chopped down by Benson Piri. While Benson decided on a double-footed slide with a Sadiki on the outer side of danger, only Benson knows and so Dynamos took the present with both hands to draw level through Morwira. To all it would end then and so the contest went to penalties. God knows Amurvira caught Dynamos going with his third goal of the match, a rising penalty unstoppable by Matutu. Then a usually reliable Ralph Matema fluffed it was his chance to draw level with an unbelievable penalty only he can explain what he was trying to do. It was 1-0 in Dynamos favor. Elisha Muroiwa then gave up also some hope for a comeback blasting his kicker to the grandstands but Highlanders would not make full use of the advantage as Brian Abanda also sent his taker to the predominantly Dynamos fans. Ex-Highlanders midfielder Valentine Daba was in no mood for favours to his former team confidently placing his shot far and wide of Prosper Matutu's dive. Daba then appeared to tone down any celebrations whatsoever from his team's supporters perhaps in sympathy for his former team. 
Young Adrian Silla kept Highlanders in at the match, sending Makaruse the wrong way, and it was 2 1 with both sides having taken three penalties apiece. Mukuruva picked himself up as well as the ball, also to send his counterpart the wrong way, and made it 3 1 for Dimbare. But a bigger Douglas Sibanda kept Poso Skribar of Hopes alive, beating Mukuruva to narrow the scoreline at 3 2 with one more round of penalties to go. It got even more promising for Highlanders when Dynamo's next penalty by Wisdom Mutaza went skywards and all Highlanders Raman Kutsanzira needed to do to bring a Poso back into the game was hit the net. But the Poso's player's player of the year produced a copy of Mutaza's kick and the match was over. It was a dampening moment to the Poso celebrations but at the same time as such is the fate of football you have to accept the results when they come. All the same the Poso diehard remained undeterred on the mission to celebrate and their biggest rivals also also joined in the Highlanders festivities at the clubhouse with both sets of supporters coming together to make merry and bury the hatchet of the past. Highlanders board member Elkana Dube addressed the patrons and thanked Dynamos for accepting the invitation to participate in the Poso at 90 commemorations as well as coming over to the clubhouse to put the icing on the cake of what has been the coming of age of the great institution that Highlanders is. I want to to So, Super Sunday then, an historical Sunday when Highlanders turned 90 and all animosity between Poso and Dimbare was for once buried in the past. It's a history made and all shall remember the events of this day as they have been archived in the unerasable records of memory.